Is this going to be the Ghostbusters HQ? That's what I really wanted. Right, so it's the next day. Um, I've taken all the bolts out of the clutch here. Um, uh, in fact, all but one, otherwise it would be on the floor. Um, it is quite dark in here. You're going to have to uh, excuse that. It's quite dark and dank in here. It's more like a dungeon than a workshop. So yeah, there's one bolt holding this in. So in theory, I remove this bolt and the entire clutch assembly will come off. Not the flywheel, but the clutch itself. I'll just pop that up there. because They are often located on dowels. And in this instance, tightly enough that the dowels hold it on without the bolts even being in there. So a gentle bit of persuasion. I said I didn't think it was that bad or I didn't know, but I think it actually is uh, knackered. Oh, there we go. Clutch cover there, which because it's a dual mass flywheel is quite slim uh, because the flywheel body itself takes up so much space that you can't have a standard sort of bell-shaped clutch. And there is the friction plate, which is quite worn. Yeah, that's nearly down to the rivet. You, what you notice with this is there's no springs. Um, on really old cars, they had a solid plate like this. This one doesn't have any springs in it either, but the reason it doesn't is the flywheel deals with the damping. Uh, what you normally get is a spring there, maybe four springs, five springs, um, mounted so that the input side here fights against the springs before it actually does anything, which gives it a bit of damping and takes a bit of vibration out of it. If you didn't have the springs, it'd be a horrible feel on a clutch. It would just be on off like a switch. So originally you have these machine marks here. And there's none left on that side. But you hear that saying down to the rivets. The rivets obviously hold the whole thing together. Well, that there. So that clutch has had its life. It's done its job. So this is no good. The release bearing for this clutch is actually, it is part of the uh, cover. And it is absolutely ruined. I mean, look at that. Well, that'll be what the funny noise was when I was driving it. I can't help but think, though, that... Uh... Oh, man, there's some play in that. These are going to be fairly tight. And then eventually, it can come off of here and fall onto my foot. Well, you would hear much swearing. I can't see into the future, by the way, so if that does happen, it was just the most likely scenario. I didn't know it was going to happen. And I certainly didn't plan for it to happen. <laughs> There's quite a lot of Loctite on these normally because you don't want those coming undone while the engine's running. That's not ideal. So, and there's normally a fine thread. Finer thread bolts are stronger than coarse thread bolts. So you need quite a good strong bolt to do this. And it's got one, two, is that eight? No, nine. Three, three, nine. Sorry, I've just forgotten how to count. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. It is eight. Would you let this man work on your car? You can't count to eight. Nope, that bolt's come out completely. Yeah, see, it's a fine thread. Yeah, fine thread. Had a fair bit of Loctite on it. I mean, you don't reuse these bolts. I'm pretty sure the solid kit comes with some bolts to fit in place. But those are lovely bolts. I'm going to keep them. It's got oil in the back of it. So I've got one more bolt to do. and. What normally happens is there's there's normally a dowel on the end of the crank that locates the uh, that registers the flywheel. Uh, so that in theory, if I pull that bolt out, it should stay up there. But not all crankshafts have that. Sometimes you find, in fact, this one is one of those. Sometimes you find the bolt pattern is arranged in a certain way that you can't put the flywheel on any other way than the way it's meant to go. That's because it's balanced. The crank is balanced, and the flywheel is balanced. Oh, there we go. Right. Look at that. One dual mass flywheel. No. 
one ruined dual mass flywheel. So you can see where the flywheel was bolted, now that I've got a light. So that's the crankshaft there, that is the end of the crankshaft. There's the locating dowel. You can only put the flywheel on one way, you can't put it on any other way. I mean, there probably are some rubbish engines out there where the bolts are all sort of equal distance and there's no dowel to register it, so you have to mark it yourself before you take it apart. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's about the size of it. You've got the crankshaft rear mainsail here. Now there is a bit of oil along here, and some people would say, well, you know, you should change that. I'm not going to, because that oil isn't coming out of there, because it's dry on that inner lip there. That oil is, it's a diesel. They're dirty and oily. So we can clean all this up. I don't go nuts with it, because it's obviously not a show car, but uh, yeah. That's looking okay. So you've got no spigot bearing on these cars. Uh, a lot of old cars had a bearing inside the end of the crank, which located the input shaft for the clutch, uh, for the gearbox, sorry. Because the bearing in the gearbox, if you if you took a gearbox off, if you take the gearbox off the imp, the Hillman imp transaxle, the input shaft floats around. It just moves about. Because the bearing isn't strong enough inside the gearbox to hold it. So it, the end of the shaft nose dives into a bearing in the end of the crank, and that's the spigot bearing. Um, if you ever get a situation where you're engaging the spigot bearing, and, and that would be uh, when you've got the clutch pressed, because when you push the clutch, you disengage drive, the gearbox stops, but the engine carries on, that's when that bearing would come into effect. You get a noise when you do that, when you've got, the, when you've got it all the way down, then it's more than likely the spigot bearing. It could still be the release bearing or the thrust bearing, which operates the clutch, but it's more than likely the spigot on an old car if it has a spigot bearing. This doesn't. Uh, all the front wheel drive Peugeot Citroen stuff, the gearbox, the bearing in the gearbox is, is uh, deemed okay. It's, it's a different design, basically. I guess it has needle bearings on the input shaft. I don't know. I've never taken the gearbox apart. So. Well, not intentionally. I have taken the gearbox apart once in Botley. Um, but I was trying to drive home. Probably because I was driving a bit too enthusiastically, and I disassembled my gearbox on the road. I think it clean up all that needs, and we better make sure the new flywheel fits. Speaking of which, I better go and dig it out. Now what we have here is a really exciting opportunity. We get to do a unboxing video. So this is a box. This is like I've watched this. I've watched a I've watched a fella on YouTube, which is here, uh, unboxing phones. So um this is kinda like that, only clutches. Please excuse my rickety trestle table here, which I've lent against the ramp to uh, prevent it from wobbling around. We are also underneath Cecily. Hopefully it does actually have a clutch in it. Because if it doesn't, then today is going to be unproductive. Right. Oh, this is so exciting. Take them out more quicker than one at a time. Oh, I've got an invoice. I normally get those when you buy things on eBay. And, and it's a sticker. Weird. So, £289.75 this costs. It looks a little careworn. <laughs> um, but it could be why they're cheap. I'm going to knock this over in a minute. I know it. Mm. Yeah, this could be why they're reduced on eBay because the box is a bit. Ooh, okay, that is a little bit used. I was going to say, try not to wreck the packaging in case you need to send it back, but, um, wow. That's going to have been shaken about a fair bit in there. Oh, okay, yeah, you, uh, you do get what you pay for. A ripped bag. Some loose fixings. So, what have we got? We've got a clutch cover, which is a good start. We have a clutch plate, which is even better, and it has, wow, that has the mother of all springs in it. This kit contains a sticker that advises people the car has been retrofitted with a single mass conversion. <laughs> oh, here we go, so it's been returned once already. 
Uh, oh, I don't like the look of this. A mechanic in London has bought this already and has returned it. So I have a copy of their invoice and I have a copy of my invoice. They returned it in February 2018. So how do these guys even know that everything's in here? They haven't even checked that the invoice was in there because you would remove that. What is this? It's in better shape than the one on the car. And the flywheel. Oh, is that the sticker? Oh, I think it is. And there we go. Now that's some grease to put on the splines. There's the sticker for the single mass conversion kit. What is happening here? And what is this? That's a what it's a release bearing, but I'm guessing that's a spring. That goes on there. Does that just push in here? Oh yeah, it might do. So I'm guessing. I'll look at the other one and see what's come off on that, but I'm guessing what we've got here is a spring, sprung washer, and you've got the release bearing here, which appears to have this, it's got this conical sort of plastic taper on it. So I think what happens is this washer, I mean, I'm going to have to double check this. I'm going to have to log on to French car forum because other people will have done this. The plastic bit on the back here, that wasn't on, but I think that's just fallen off. I have to check all this really thoroughly now to make sure there's nothing missing. So yeah, I think that goes behind here. And then you align the bearing, I'm guessing, into the release arm in the gearbox. It'll only go one way up because the clips are different. And then when you first depress the pedal, no, when, sorry, when you first press the pedal, I think what will happen is that plastic debris on there will get pushed through and click into the clutch and then it's stuck in there. Yes! This clutch, is this, that's not a pull clutch, is it? I think it is. I know that some of these cars had pull clutches where rather than pushing against the fingers on the clutch to release it, it pulled them away, which seems backwards, but... Oh, my tea's ready. I forgot about that. Right, so I'm now loaded with my tea. Um, I'm going to go through these parts and check everything's here. So this kit was put together by Valio, so they date everything, 12th of May 2017. So some of this stuff has already fallen out. So we've got... So we've got all our bolts there, that's good. How many of these have we got? Six, I believe that is the right number. So we have all our bolts. So we've got clutch friction plate here. So you could see on the old plate, oh, weight difference here. That's how thin the old one is and how sort of shiny it's got and worn down. There's the new one. Focus. Come on. Looks like an ELO album cover, doesn't it? So that's the new one. A fair bit thicker, given the tolerances that we're used to dealing in. I can't. Yeah, well, you have to take my word for it. So, yeah, and it's cleverly labelled. So that's gearbox side. It says on there, you'll have to tilt your head. Um, gearbox side. Made by Valio, I should hope so. So, gearbox side obviously means that this is the engine side, the flywheel side, the gearbox side protrudes outwards. So that will sit in there and the flywheel does have a raised surface here with a little lip on it. Incidentally, if you have a TVR Cerbera and you go to get your flywheel reface and they remove this tiny lip, which on a Cerbera is even smaller than that. That's about half a mil. Cerbera is probably a quarter of that. Um, if you get rid of that lip, the clutch will drag and you'll have to take it all apart again and get them to put the lip back in. 
ask me how I know. So that's come apart. I think that has just fallen apart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that appears to have gone together. Yeah, that's the bear, and so does that go over there? I don't think it does. Does it go there? Am I going to regret putting that bit of plastic in there? Was that meant to go inside there? Doesn't matter, it's on the floor now. Right, I'm going to have to Google this to see what I'm doing with this release bearing. Because I don't... Oh, no, it's come back out. There we go. I don't fully know. Does it go in there? Oh, fits very nicely in there. Maybe that's it. We shall look. Funnily enough, I'm not used to stuff like this. TVRs don't have all this stuff. So, yeah, that would go on... Line up the dowels, so it will go together like that. But I will just check the depth. So we've got what size is that? Does it say? I'm guessing it's that size. So there we have, and that will go in there eventually, like that kind of, a bit like that. So there we've got single mass conversion and the original dual mass flywheel. Side by side. Looks about right, doesn't it? I mean, the bit I'm worried about is that it's been returned and I know what motor trade's like. They might have ended up with the wrong flywheel on another job. From a clutch they bought cheap, so they bought in another one, nicked the flywheel out of it, put the wrong one back in the box and send it back again. That's, um, and that sort of thing does happen. So I'm just going to check all the part numbers and things, make sure they all correspond. So they're made by Valio, 23rd of May 2017, so that figures in with the bag, which was on the 12th, I think. Yeah. At 1.54 in the afternoon. Need to know information. Oh, now the friction plate is a spring chicken made on the 29th of May, quarter, quarter to nine in the evening. Make sure the cogs mesh as well. Does it? Have we got a missing tooth? It does have a missing tooth. That's good. No, I think it's good enough. You've got this. Um, You've got the ring gear here. Well, they say it's a ring gear. Is it actually a ring gear or is that part of it? Oh, no, that is a ring gear. So this cogged edge around here is uh, is the ring gear. That's what the starter motor drives on. And that's the separate part to the flywheel. That's actually heated up while the flywheel is cooled down and then pressed on. And then when the temperature is equalised, it's a very tight fit. Uh, so if you knacker your ring gear, you can remove it. I think they, they generally say to put that in your oven at home smash the old one off, cut it off, and then put the new ring gear in the oven and put the flywheel in the freezer. Leave them overnight. I mean, not don't leave the oven on overnight, obviously, but leave that in the freezer overnight. And then, yeah, the next day you can put them together. Um, but the other teeth on it here, this is for that crank sensor that I found when I was taking it apart, the TDC sensor. That'll be on, on this car because this car has an ECU and everything. It's a common rail diesel that crank sensor will be counting the RPM at the bottom um, of the engine. Uh, it knows how many times it's done a revolution because there are some teeth missing. That's deliberate. So that's its reference point each time it goes around. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's good and that all looks the same. On the back, you can see some little holes. That's balancing. So that's how they balance it. Oh, there is a date on the flywheel, I think. 30th of May, 2017. She's the youngest. I'm 
fairly happy with that. I just need to research what's going on with this release bearing. Well, YouTube, we have a problem. Uh, yes, yeah, so we don't have enough parts. Um, good news and bad news. Uh, good news is I managed to go away and find out how um, everything that I had here went together. Uh, the uh, the spring does go in a bit that I thought it went in on the release bearing, and I have pretty much clicked that together, although it needs a, a little extra push, probably in a vice, just to get that plastic lugged back in. Um, and you do indeed fit the release bearing to the release arm, and then when you put it all together, you get it to engage in the clutch. So they'll come out like this. You can't put them in like this. You have to put them in with a bearing on the arm. Fine, not a problem. Oh, you have to replace the arm. Yeah, I didn't know that. So uh, the arm that goes in the gearbox, which I'll show you in a sec, that needs replacing because apparently that wears. It is a pull clutch. So it's actually pulling on the fingers on the clutch, not pushing because of reasons. And uh, yeah, you need to replace that arm and the seals that it comes with and the bushes that the shaft that it pivots on pivots in. And can I get through to the Citroen dealer? No. But then it is half 12. So it's lunchtime, which isn't a good time to bring a parts department. Um, I'm hoping they've got one there. Uh, because if they haven't, I'm going to be waiting. So I'm hoping they've got parts there and uh, that we can put the whole thing back together. I mean, I can, I can refit the clutch and everything to the engine. I can clean the engine up. I can do some bits and bobs around there, but I can't actually put the gearbox back on until I've got the new release bearing, uh, sorry, release arm. Um, and also the nose that the bearing slides on uh, that goes on the front of the gearbox. Some people call it a nose, collar, it's a bit tube, I think. Um, probably gonna change that because they're not expensive. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be that. There's not really much else in there. The thing is, it is worth changing the bits that go inside it, because if you don't, and then it turns out you needed to, you've got to fit the gearbox off again, which is not a fun job. <sighs> I'm trying to ring the, the dealer I'm trying to ring is in Portsmouth. Um, and I've rung them before, and they've been good um, from the parts side of things. I have got a dealer closer to me, not so much set up to deal with trade, uh, you have to go there, um, but I try not to use them because they're rubbish. So, uh, yeah, well, part side is anyway. So, yeah, I think um, I could ring a factors, and it is possible that the local factor, which is pretty good, uh, will have will be able to do the release arm because if it is that common that you have to do it with every clutch, as the bulletin that I found says, then it may be something a factor does, but they probably won't do that nose, that collar that goes on the front. So I kind of need a genuine one now anyway, which is a bugger. But I have got a lot of other parts for this car, so I probably could make a start on some of the other bits. Uh, things like the rear brakes. I've um, got a lot of parts to unbox. Um, I've even got a new bit of exhaust pipe turned up for it. So, yeah, I think uh, I think we've got enough to do. I just wanted to get that thing back together. I've still got to do the cam belt yet. And I can't do the cam belt because I've removed this engine mount. And to do that cam belt, I need to remove that engine mount. And the engine lifting beam is only designed to pick up one side of the engine. It's not designed to put the whole weight of the engine. If it was, it would just go straight through the wings, probably. So we don't want that. I've ordered some parts as well. So I've ordered lower ball joints and I've ordered track rod ends um, because they are knackered and the lower ball joint on that side is shot. So I could try getting those out as well. And I'm hoping I'll be able to get those out without removing the uprights. But Cecily's been good to me so far, so... This isn't Cecily's fault. <sighs> Cars, eh? They're good fun. I'm gonna go and try that dealer again. We've got some Jeopardy. Yeah. Call the car SOS people. I've got a series for them. Um, so yeah, this is real Jeopardy. Well, no, it's not actually. It's just an inconvenience. Um, so basically, um, we're stuck. Can't put the gearbox back on. Having a nightmare. Um, Hour and a half has passed. I've given up trying to get through to the Citroen dealer. They're just not answering the phone. Um, I know if they're down to very low staff members for whatever reason, maybe COVID, isolation, that kind of thing, um, then fine. 
but my alternative is to drive to Portsmouth and find out they don't have anything on the shelf, which would be annoying. So what we've done instead is I've conversed with the owner. We've managed to find the parts we need online um, in aftermarket format. And uh, hopefully those will be here, fingers crossed, tomorrow. Because if we're here tomorrow, at least I can put the gearbox back on tomorrow. So the parts we've ordered are the release arm here, which the slave cylinder pushes against. And that in turn, so if you imagine the slave cylinder's on the other side, when you push the pedal, it pushes against the arm, like this. And that pulls the bearing, which on this backwards car operates the clutch. Um, and what can happen is this shaft here, that this is pivoting on, well the shaft can wear, but the arm itself can wear. I wouldn't say it feels that worn to be honest, but so that's one of the things, and they say you should always change that. Can we find one of those today? Can we balls? Um, that is uh, gonna be at best case tomorrow, worst case Thursday from eBay, um, 40 quid as well. Uh, it does come with the white plastic bushes, which I think. So that's a pain, um, but it is what it is. There's no point putting all this back together and finding that it needs that, and then, you know, you've got to take it apart again. The other thing we've ordered is this, which is below it, the collar or guide tube or whatever. Many different names for that. Uh, the release bearing, uh, I don't have it to hand because it's stuck to the old clutch, obviously. Um, the release bearing slides on that, so when this operates the release bearing, which in turn operates the clutch, it slides up and down on that tube. And if this tube is worn, and in fairness it is, it is quite badly worn, when we put the new one on, that's going to make the clutch feel horrible. It needs to slide smoothly on that. So it makes sense to change it. There is no point half arsing it on a car that you are, you know, he is specifically having this car. If he just wanted a cheap car, he'd just buy any cheap car but he specifically wants a C5 and he wants it to drive as well as it can. And actually I think the car could drive quite well, as well as it can. So yeah, we've ordered that. That's got a seal inside it as well, which comes as part of this housing. Interesting developments on the GSF website. GSF, so my local factor, nope, no good, can't do anything. Uh, the local Citroen dealer, the very close Citroen dealer to me, I'm not even gonna, the dealer in Portsmouth I can't get hold of. So we've gone online. Now GSF do actually list this guide tube here, but I didn't order it from the chat because I thought, well, I've got to order one of these anyway. Turns out if you order it online as a retail customer and then use the 45% discount code, you get it cheaper than you would have done if you were a trade. So I've let, I've let Phil order it anyway. Um, so that's coming from GSF. Confusion on their website because this gearbox, uh, this gearbox is, I've renewed my service Citroen uh, subscription this morning so I can access the part system again um, the genuine one and it gives you a lot of information about the car that you're looking at parts for and there was a change of gearboxes on the C5s it seems some of them have this, it was one of the videos I think it was yesterday I was confused as to what gearbox this actually was because on visual I thought it was an ML the bigger one because it's got all this on the top and my Peugeot um, that I'm going to be cutting up um, also has that and that would have an ML because it's got a V6 in it but I th it just seems so small and light I thought MLs were huge and heavy um, and also this has got a removable diff I was told the ML doesn't but that very much does so yeah so we've gone on GSS website GSS website says that um, Cars after a certain build date had ML, and cars up to the build date had BE. The build date they give is actually based on the RP number of the car, and the RP number of this car is 9353. I'll do a separate thing about RP numbers on cars because, well, I find it interesting. RP numbers on Peugeots and Citroëns, I should say. Um, now, nine five, now, this is the interesting bit, 9353. Guess what date that gives? Bearing in mind that today it's the... Uh, 16th of August, 2021. Guess what date 9353 is? You wouldn't believe this. It, no, actually, it's not today at all. It's June sometime. Um, yeah, I think it was June the 18th, this car's birthday is. That there, 
the two bolt cone as you can see there is there are two bolts it's almost a diamond shaped cone that is according to their website for the ml gearbox and if you go on service sits and it does say this car has an ml gearbox but on gsf's website it says cars after build that or rp number nine six something and this is nine three something so that's when you start getting confused and that's how people end up the wrong parts it seems to me gsf gsf's website is wrong or the cataloging is wrong um that's i think that's all it can be because citroen themselves by chassis number say this car has an ml gearbox it's rp number is 9353 and it does have a two bolt one it even gives a picture and it gives you the part number so we've ordered the part on gsf's website for despite the fact the website says it's wrong so unless they've got their pictures around the wrong way and their rp numbers around the wrong way in which case i'll take the part that we get through the post and go and throw it through their window um that should be the right one despite the fact their website says it's not i think their website's wrong and that we're right but we'll see what happens um and then yeah so that'll be due tomorrow uh and the release arm hopefully tomorrow but what that does mean is that i can't put the gearbox back on i can fit the clutch i can clean the gearbox up a bit some people are saying i should change these seals drive shaft seals i'm i'm not fancying it i'm not fancying it i can't help but think that it's more likely to leak if i do they haven't been leaking so i'm gonna leave them i'm gonna risk it now it's not all bad because there are other bits i can do as i say and due to the fact that we have no parts to carry on and put this thing back together we could do some more unboxing yay this is like christmas all over again who doesn't love unboxing car parts so A jiffy bag with yeah. that is a rear brake pad fitting kit. Well, a pair of them actually. We don't have the rear brake pads, but we have the fitting kit for the rear brake pads. Some grease. Another fitting kit for the rear brake pads. Are they both different types? No, they are the same. Well, if you want brake pad fitting kits, you know where to come. Motor Clips Direct. washer bottle cap eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed the uh, original one was a little pub nut and when i say the original one i mean the bit of rag that was stuffed down the hole well that's got more weight oh that sounds a bit brake paddy I'm try and reuse a lot of these jiffy bags because recycle where you can oh that looks like brake pads. If that's rear brake pads, at least I can change the rear brake pads. It is not the rear brake pads. It is the front brake pads. But we have got front brake pads at least. TRW too. Nice. Yeah, they're good. Hmm. Ooh, what could it be? What could it be? love a spending uh opening car parts up it's even better when it's not your money oh, i'm not going to be saving that box i don't think i wonder what it could be seeing as it's got a picture of a brake caliper on the outside it's a brake caliper <laughs> with a fitting kit <laughs> it's got the fitting kit already and why have I got one brake caliper? Do we even need brake calipers? Why have I got... A... I didn't even tell him I needed a brake caliper. 
I'll tell you what, Cecily's having some love. It's nice, isn't it? It's nice to see Cecily getting some love. Where's my bin? Oh. oh that went in. First time. An exhaust, well, I say exhaust fitting kit, it's just a couple of clamps. So that would be. Why have I got. Oh, I think one of them is that one up there. I don't need that. We'll come back to that. I'll, I'll show you the exhaust later on. I did know there was some bits coming for the exhaust. Any paperwork? No. Now, I am no expert, but I think this could be a pair of something. Brake fluid. Racing brake fluid. Okay. Oh, am I doing a brake change on this now as well? I didn't realise that. And there is one more. You save the big one to the end, don't you? Is this going to be the Ghostbusters HQ? I think that's what I really wanted. Had a load of jumpers so far. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, this could be useful. A set of brake pads for the rear, I'm guessing. Yep. We have rear pads. We also have... Rear discs. 45 quid. Can't go wrong, can you? Well, you can. You put them on and they squeal. There we go. 276 mil diameter solid disc. Looks about right. Okay, well, I can do the rear discs. That's good. I can change the... Well, I can do one of the calipers. I don't know why we've got one caliper. I need to speak to the man. I have no front discs yet. I do need those. Uh, I've ordered the ball joints. I've ordered the track rod ends. Ordered the clutch bits. Yeah, okay. It's 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 not great. It's not you know. It would have been nice to uh, be able to put the gearbox back on, but it's better to do it properly and take a little longer than uh, than rush through, skip bits, and regret it. So okay. Well, I'm gonna have some lunch and then. Uh, do some other work. Okay, so I've had lunch and uh, the time has passed immeasurably. Well, it isn't immeasurably, you can measure it because time is a number. But two hours have passed since I stopped recording. Uh, the reason for that is that someone came in and started talking about the SM, um, who was, he wasn't, he didn't come here specifically to talk about that, but he noticed it in the background and then that was that. And despite the fact that I don't like talking to people, not really a people person. If someone starts talking SMs, I get carried away sometimes. So an hour has gone with that. And then I sat down to eat my lunch and I thought, I've put it off enough, I have to watch Project Binky to see if it started or not. I'm not saying if it did, you'll have to do that yourself. So, now I've got my thoughts collected. I've uh, spoken to Phil, the owner, about the things he's purchased. There are supposed to be two brake calipers. Let's just double check, make sure I'm not wrong. One caliper. Definitely one caliper. So, that's that. Now, before I go putting the flywheel onto the engine, uh, the, the single mass flywheel, um, I have some scales. I think we should see if the single mass is lighter or heavier than the dual mass. So as you can see, we have zeroed the bathroom scales. My wife doesn't know I've brought this to work. I'm joking, that's not the one from our bathroom. That's far too clean for our bathroom. Right, so first things first, just the flywheel. 
So here's the dual mass. And there's nowhere to put it down without getting your hands wrecked. What we at? What we at? 13 and a half. And how about that with the clutch? Because I think clutch is going to be lighter. That weighs not even a kilo. But the cover will. There we go. Total weight of 16, roughly. Prepare those to go in the bin. I mean, yeah, look at that. It's got a lot of play that way as well. I mean, in theory, when you push the clutch, I suppose that play doesn't... Mm, oh, no, it does matter, because that's not... Surely that's knackered. I don't know. This is the first dual mass flow. Well, no, actually, it's not. I've done up to see those scales are useless, because they've gone back to... It's not the first dual mass flow wheel I've done. I did a BMW M3 once. Right. This is the single mass. It's lighter. We've lost half a kilo. Think of the throttle response. Of course, that half a kilo could be in the inaccuracy of the scales, but they both started from zero, so in theory, it's fine. But the clutch, I think, is heavier. So I think the total weight will be higher. That's 15. Ooh, oh dear. 18 and a half. We've gained two and a half kilos. So the flywheel was lighter, but the clutch, ooh, the clutch is heavier. Well, that's fine, we just won't fit the clutch. Save some weight. 